John Survivor Blake, this is Mother's Nature. I brushed her hair, begging strands of memories to bring back a younger version of her face, hair cascading to the floor, now gray. Rope I once hung from in a house of pain. My eyes were opened only four years when I first noticed the hunch in her back. Her spine bent from abandonment, her dreams dead, drifting off the tip of her cigarette, floating aimlessly from man to man to man. My mother laid herself on the mattress like a gentle curl, her legs for them a split end. Like the hair she spent hours training to behave for their amusement in darkness. To beg, sit, lie down, roll over, play dead. See, storms brewed in her bedroom. Thunder clapped against the headboard. Tornadoes grew around her ring finger when she exchanged vows with hurricanes. Seasons of destruction just came and went. Left us to rummage beneath her flattened breast for a part of her that may have survived. I was the youngest of nine experiments in this two-bedroom cage, drenched in torrential tears flooding pots on her stove, wet with the stains of salivating stepfathers a long ago, table legs now cracked from the weight of heavy bills, outweighing the welfare check, so her college tuition withered away like autumn leaves for our school clothes every September. Prostitution? Well, that enabled her the free time to attend our parent-teacher meetings, lipstick, on her face I remember, perfect without a mirror, as she left the house and modeled shamelessly for gossip masterpieces that painted the scarlet letters she willingly wore on a you chain. My mother sewed no apologies together and made a blue dress for the devil she had to be. She knelt at Sunday altars and prayed for one painless moment, Magdalene washing the feet of that crucifix with sobbing sincerity. See, she screamed, cried, died daily, tried staying away from dope. But some days were just easier than others. She was my mother and father. She was two half-lives sharing full responsibility and the stench of regret yanked me back to her death bedside where I was still brushing her hair till every bristle could ride her mane like some ferris wheel when wings burst from her spine, feathered with acceptance, spanned across fears of coffins and with one last breath, she glided right through me. So I wrote this poem on the flat line of her heart monitor. Mom's back finally straightened in the casket. Her hair just surrendered. Her legs, for the first time in her life, now comfortably closed. 